All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Get Your Money Right podcast brought to you by Forward Motion. I'm Sarah. I am one of the members of the Board of Forward Motion. And my name is Amanda. I'm the Executive Director of Forward Motion. We're super excited to have you here. Uh, as you can see, we have a special guest who is going to introduce herself in just a bit. But uh, before that, um, always keep in mind Forward Motion. Our mission is creating generational prosperity, one family at a time. So on the Get Your Money Right podcast, we talk about all things moving forward. That encompasses a lot of things, including the topic we're going to cover today, which is dun, 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 dun the fun of taxes um so what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna get into it we're gonna have some fun like we always do Sarah, I think you had a question for us to start. I did. That's kind of a fun one. Let's get up. You have to think hard. Really give me a true answer. True answer. All right. What is like a fashion trend that is coming back that you are like all about or just absolutely opposed by? Like, there's a lot of them. And I have one in particular I just can't stand. Go ahead and start. <laughs> the mullet. Like, right. I did the mullet. No, <laughs> I think it's a trend that should never go away. There should just be mulleted people in the world. You know, I can do some things. It's just there's no party in the front and back. It's, there's no party anywhere in them. There's there's none. There's no business. There's definitely not business. You can see it still in the back. It's from the front. It's just no. I'm, I'm not a fan. It's just it's like jelly sandals, like. That idea from the beginning. Yeah, those shouldn't come back. Don't bring them back. It was great when they were, I mean, there are like teenage kids like rocking the mullet. There are adults in professional uh, jobs rocking the mullet. I've I've seen, I've seen it. Like the adult was like, yes, it's finally, uh, I would be okay if everybody named them. That's my thing. They made their own mullet. Oh no. What? Stop it. Like George? They're like, oh, the Alabama slammer. Um, Come on. (laughs) Oh. I I didn't realize there were naming conventions. Okay. Okay. Lexi, how about you introduce yourself real quick and then tell us your uh, your fashion uh, faux pas or excitement of the uh, old fashion that's coming back. Okay, um, I'm Alexis. I am right now an accountant. I have been for seven months. Let's go. Before that, 11 years in the restaurant industry. Love it. I wanted to learn the backside, the other side of it. Yeah. Taxes, everything that, everything else that you don't do in the restaurant. Yeah. That's what I wanted to learn, so. Nice. Yeah. Um, it's cool. it's, we're excited to have you today. Yeah. Thanks. We're having you. I really talking about this topic. We can do it anyway because you're cool. Um, as far as my fashion will I say crop tops. I hate them. Oh, they take them out. I like where's the shoes? What's a crop? You please come. It's the shot and the sphere. It's the end of the okay. that, oh, It's like sorry. I mean, cut you off. But now it's like the crop top and then the really high waisted pants. And it's like, well, you're just like that defeats the purpose of the crop. Why are you even wearing the top? Yeah, the like, pants. So, I don't get that. The only people who should be wearing crop tops are male presenting, <laughs> no male presenting people in gyms, and the crop top should be like mesh like bring back the mesh workout crop top what? that is hilarious it's great like it's like you're just like i'm working out and wearing a mesh crop top and i'm i'm just doing no immediately think of 50 for the state yes yes that's hilarious no, i don't find it fun don't. don't no i don't we they do come on, but i just find it fun i think like gay men look pretty good in them but like i mean even like a girl with good abs and a good body and just like it just doesn't for me it doesn't i don't need the rest of my shirt i didn't like them when they were in style back then i don't like them now so i have one and i was actually talking about it um with katie just recently so do you guys remember the soda shoes platform tennis shoes yeah yes so they're coming back like the ones with like the not the flat bottom but like the yeah like the whole thing Mm -hmm. like i saw um 
fiance was in doing like a, a shoot, shoot something on her, um, on her Instagram. And she had these, and it looked like she was wearing like, like a, a pair of shoes that I'm not even going to like, and I was just like, are those sodas? Like, are they coming back? Are they a brand that? No, they were like, I'm, Martin. They were some like, Doc Martens? Yeah. No, Doc Martens never left and they never should. <laughs> Um, I agree. They, <laughs> Doc Martens are always there. Um, no, and I was just like, man, the soda shoes, like the platform tennis shoes, the Skechers, like plat style, and yeah, even early two thousands, early two thousands, late nineties. Like, yeah, they're they're in. But um, well, yeah. anywho, <laughs> I thought that would be fun to start us off. With. Fashion always finds a way to to make its back around. That's that's something my mom would always say, and I I don't know, not I'm not a fashionista myself. So. I think a mindset like. Let's just put this out there. That's why we become hoarders. We're close because then we're like, oh, it's going to come back around. Oh, yeah, 20 years. Yeah, but the second you, I mean, we'll move on, but the second you toss something or give it away or sell it, like a month later, two months later, six months later, you're like, I wish I had that. Yeah. XYZ. I give stuff to Dre all the time. I'm like, damn. And then you see her rocking it and she's like, making it. Yeah. Why does it look so good on me? Yeah. So okay. well, we'll move on to our my our, our main uh, our main topic, and I want to um, can I just point out that we're in a really cool studio today with like awesome headphones and laugh. and we are we are in a studio yeah. today. We uh, we have our first guest on the show, mm -hmm. and we're excited to have you, Lexi and Alexis. And um, Jesus, that's, that's you guys are allowed. Just nobody else. No one else. No. <laughs> Get that you never <laughs> unless you saw me when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm like, I've known you since you were this one. Um, all right. So we're gonna talk about taxes. And I know like I have done my own taxes for a long time. And last year, and I'll, I'll actually probably share the story, but last year I, I was gonna have someone else do my taxes because I had um, a bunch of different uh, investment things that I wanted to make sure I wasn't like double paying or um, or messing myself up on. And I have an interesting story around that. But um, I wanted to ask you, the first question I kind of had for you is, um, can you talk about how you got interested in finance and what drew you to to being um, becoming an accountant? I think you touched on it a little bit, but if you can just share a little bit more there. Yeah, well, basically, I worked in a restaurant for a long, long time. I wanted to know what goes on behind the scenes. Like, mm -hmm. cause, and I've worked with profit and losses and all of that before, but I wanted to know like the back end of it. And yeah, you know, what goes on the payroll side and the accounting side and what are the actual business expenses that we don't see? Yeah. The yeah. restaurant runners ourselves. Um, and so I was curious and I was at a point where I'm like, okay, I can run a restaurant, but that's not easy. But I want to know more. I need to know more. Yeah. What else is out there? What's going on? You know? Um, and that's how I got interested in it. One of my customers actually, the two gave me the position. Come on board. Because I've always loved numbers. So I've numbers. That's really fascinating. Fascinating. No. Yeah. My, yeah, my father has an associates in accounting. It just so happened. It has to be the person that I reach out to with my random tax questions. Yeah. Sounds right. Yeah. Um, but so it was just my curiosity because I learned everything else. I want to learn the other side. I want to know what else there is to And there's so much stuff I did not realize businesses have to deal with. Like, it's insane. And I'm like, okay, so they're not all just rich and <laughs> saving all this money. I'm like, there's so much more to it that, like, you just don't see. Like, you don't see the other side of it. There's a so it's big, insane. There's a big difference and sometimes a giant gap between gross and net profit yeah it's i don't think people realize it. a lot of people are like but look at your sickles like, okay yeah no but look at all of these expenses there's a cost right. of doing business it's, yeah yeah and a lot of times especially during covid and all of that there's not a lot of profit out there right. anywhere at all but, yeah um there's been a lot that's one thing that is cool i will say is um seeing all of the credits and the erc credits and which is the employee retention credits mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. Any business that was down got credit for anybody they kept employed. Up to $10,000 per employee per quarter, which is just insane. Mm -hmm. And a lot of businesses don't know that that's out there. Like almost all of the businesses that we work with had no idea. And so we were able to, you know, get them quite a bit of money and compensation for them 
not hitting their sales or being down a certain percent or if they were partially shut down. So and and being able to 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 do you know, a lot of people would call it, say, do the right thing by keeping their their family, right, right. employed. And because this has got rewarded for that. And so at the end, all these businesses that did, hey, we don't have a job for you. It's COVID, it's shut down. Yeah. They don't get any of that employee retention credit. And all these businesses that, like, did take care of their employees and kept them, even though, hey, we're not doing too hot, we'll figure it out. They're getting, they're getting compensated very well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting to look at. I love that topic. Maybe we'll actually, maybe we'll have you on again one day and we can really um, talk a little bit more about that side of yeah. staying in business. Um, because, you know, one of the things that we saw with COVID is a lot of, a lot of businesses are no more. And even businesses that were longtime businesses that you thought, you know, there's no way for them to, to go under, but they didn't have any cash reserves. And without those cash reserves, they weren't able to float, um, which is, it's a topic in and of itself, of course, but um, you, you kind of uh, drew that out of me. But the next question I, you know, I guess I, I kind of wanted to, um, to to segue from, you know, from just the, the business side of it to a little bit more of the personal side of it. And, you know, I, you hear the word deduction, um, tax deduction. You hear you hear that a lot, and um, you know, I, I think that there are a lot of people who are doing a great job of taking advantage of the deductions um, that uh, that are available. But I I would venture to say that there are probably a lot more who um, who aren't doing such a great job of recognizing what can be a deduction, even what a deduction is, and how to take advantage of it when they're uh, when they're moving into uh, tax season. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, you know, can you share with us, like, what is a tax deduction? So a tax deduction, basically, it's an expense that you, you can essentially write off, not all of it, a portion of it, percentage of it. There's, there's so many out there, mm -hmm. a lot more for business owners, yeah. not just personal, but for your personal taxes right now, you can take a deduction for using, from working from home. Mm -hmm. You have a at home, you take a percentage of your utility, everything. Your you take a percentage of that. If you're cable. working from home. Uh, what are they, I say cable because I'm old. What is it called? Your yeah. internet? Yeah, your Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi. Yeah, your internet, your Wi-Fi, you know, any power, a certain percentage of that every month or if you want to calculate it every year, you can deduct that. Like yeah. that's a deduction for you because you're using your own research, resources to do that. And a lot of people are just, oh, I don't know. Business mm -hmm. owners, though? they're like, Got to do it. I mean, all of them. What are they? Yes. You know, which makes sense. But you can do that on your personal as well. I don't think people think about that. Yeah, because so say say you had a home. Say your your home is three bedrooms, um, and uh, you were using two of those bedrooms, and one was say a playroom, and you turn that playroom into an office because you were required now to work from home. Say this office is two hundred square feet. Now you have 200 square feet, which is then going to be a percentage of the uh, of the size of your home. For easy math, let's just say that um, the home is 800 square feet because that's how my life works. And so now we're talking 25% of your home is now your office. And so that means 25% of your light bill, 25% of your um, of potentially your gas. If you're now, you know, cooking your, your lunch meals at home, right? 25% of your of your internet um, expenses are now 25% um, of your mortgage or, or your rent are now business yes. expenses and exactly. potentially yeah. uh, make sure that you look into and, and reach out to your, your tax professional because yes. the tax professional yes. are potentially that deductible, right? Exactly. Yes. So, and that's not true for everybody. There are certain exclusions. Um, so yes, definitely talk to. Okay. So I'm talking about that. Like, um, no, I do my own taxes with the exception of I have somebody look over them afterwards, my dad, because all of our dads are in that kind of realm. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll do it on like the online by myself, pay for it. I'll just say things, like the names and things. No, they're not paying us. Let's, let's not give them any free advertising. So, no, uh, <laughs> uh, my question is, there's like the standard deductions you have to basically, I, I feel like I understand that, but maybe you can explain that a little bit more to me because I feel like, so that's like, Unless you're over the certain amount of expenses, you're not gonna get reimbursed for individual expenses unless it exceeds this amount. Is that kind of, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So for the average person like me, 
Um, and I think it was like 1500 or something last year. Is that, am I wrong? Does that number seem really wrong? I know for a married couple um, filing jointly, it was like close to 22,000 like oh, 20, okay. so or something. But anyway, the large amount, I think maybe it's more than a thousand. I think it was like 17,000 okay. for, um, for individual. I, I could be wrong on that, um, like all on tax code. Is there any, and I remember like as a kid, like, our parents are on tax seat and like freaking out about the receipts and like going all over the house and like pulling out shoe boxes full of like receipts and it was like that's how you did your taxes and I feel like that's kind of shifted that's not really everything's so electronic now so I wouldn't even have like all these individual things to really look back on or should I be or is it the fact of the matter that I'm really never going to reach that amount and so like I'll put the stuff in, but it always still said like I'll put my uniform cost, you know, I'm a nurse, I have to buy uniforms, that's part of my job. Uh, I've been told that I should put my cell phone cost in there because I utilize my own personal phone for work constantly. Um so somebody told me like, oh you could put that in there. But if, even if I put that in there, is it really gonna make a difference for me? Um I I don't know because I mostly work for businesses. Gotcha. Okay. Don't do much on personals. I would say always put it in, yes. So at least you have the documentation for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say everything that does relate to your job. Like I remember um, back when I was a blackjack dealer, they considered us models. Um, <laughs> okay. But any of our makeup or tanning or getting our hair done, that was considered a write-off for our profession. Yeah. Um, oh. It it depends on what you're doing, okay. but. I would always put everything in there just so you at least have a paper trail. And if somebody is like, hey, prove this. That's why it's important to have face statements and stuff like yeah. that. Which is something that you said everything is electronic and that's true. And that's probably the best thing because it's so hard to prove you bought something. Yeah. Cash. Right. Or where you got that cash from or anything. Debit card, everything is tracked. It's perfect for tax reasons. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, and, and there's also, you know, again, I'm not a tax a tax professional, but as you guys know, I love I love finance, and um, you know, one of the things to think about is uh, one of the things to think about. One of the things that I think a lot of people don't recognize is, and we'll 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 get there, but in in this show, but there's a difference between tax preparation, right, getting your taxes prepared, and tax planning. And tax planning is one of those concepts that all of us normal people need to get on board with. Because wealthy people, when they're making purchases, when they're making decisions in their life throughout the year, they are doing that either themselves or with the help of their tax professional with tax planning in mind, yes. right? I'm gonna purchase this in this manner for this cost from this particular business, because I understand that due to this LLC that I have or that, or, or, or this um, amount of money that I'm going to have coming in, I need to execute on X amount of, uh, of deductions for this category throughout the year in order to, uh, to, to be in, a, in the best financial position for myself. And that's a big challenge that a lot of folks don't do because you know I, I'm always I'm always loving to, t to challenge and, and I used to my, my mom used to always you know she's notorious with the shoebox of receipts and notorious with with uh, with the Dutchess. and um, throughout the year she's constantly making conscious decisions based on where she falls in the tax bracket and what she knows is going to happen and I would always say no I don't need to do that it doesn't matter I'm never going to hit that that's above that standard deduction, but you'd be surprised throughout the year, the things that you're not keeping track of potentially that that could actually help to add up and get you to that to that next to that spot to where it does make sense to itemize rather than um, rather than take the, the standard deduction. Do you feel like there's anything in particular that sticks out to you that would be an example of some of those things or like the everyday person? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, uh, I think like Steve brought up one of the biggest ones is we just have this max exodus from office and um, and there's a lot of cost that goes into maintaining a home office. I think um, there's also a potential of, of auto expenses that we're not recognizing can be deducted for uh, that can be can be deducted. We're not recognizing throughout the year um, what actually falls under health care costs because there are things that can fall under the cost of, of health care, preventative care that in a 
always, always, always consult your tax professional, but things like things like toothpaste, things like, um, like, you know, female care products, things like, um, you know, if you have to go to, to Walgreens and you're, you're getting ibuprofen and, um, and different like medicines and things like that, um, a lot of those things can, can add up and whether it's using your HSA for them or. Hey, I we'll learned that I could use mm-hmm. the HSA for that stuff. Like, yeah. I never knew that. I, yeah. Yeah. I was like. And an HSA is a health savings account. So it's a savings account where a portion of your income um, from your payroll will come out of your check and go onto a separate uh, debit card or into a separate account that is set aside tax deferred and set aside or tax deferred or tax exempt and set aside for um, healthcare costs. So a lot of people think they can only use that when they go to the doctor or have to go to a specialist. But that's not actually the case with most HSAs. So if you read the fine print and you use it wisely, you can actually um, purchase a lot of the, the healthcare costs that you need for, for your year tax-free. And then the HSA is the one that rolls over to the next year and the FSA doesn't, right? That is a great question. Okay. I do not know the answer, though. No. <laughs> so, um, what, what would you say, um, you know, how do you best prepare yourself throughout the year? Like, how does someone best prepare themselves throughout the year for the tax season? Because I, I think, you know, Sarah, you brought up a really great point. At the end of the year, a lot of people are scrambling and maybe, and you know, maybe you're listening and you're like, I'm just trying to get my tax refund at the end of the year. And I think there's, there's something really important to understand about a tax refund and how it may not even be the best way for you to tax plan throughout the year to, to assume that you're to, or to, to wait for a refund, right? Cause, cause what is a tax refund? Cause I mean, if that's, if that's the case, you know, take the highest deduction from your paycheck. You for sure want a refund. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to do that. Um, I would say, and you brought it up earlier, tax plan. Mm-hmm. It is so important to get all your ducks in a row by at least October mm-hmm. to figure out what am I going to do for my 401k contribution? What am I going to do for X, Y, Z is planning. Mm-hmm. Like, And when you do your plan for one year, start on your plan for the next year as well. That's something that our firm mostly does is yeah. tax plans for multi-million dollar companies mm-hmm. down to thousand dollar income companies we have a tax plan for everybody like this is how we're going to maximize maximize yes that's what our company does yeah the most um and it, they we look at everything like what are your expenses what's your income okay you made too much money how do we offset that mm-hmm. we offset that with expenses did you remodel anything? What did you do? Okay, you remodeled your office. Why isn't that anywhere that we can see it? Like, keep track of what you're actually doing throughout the year, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the main ways to increase your expense, at least as a business. Yeah. Um, as an individual. To keep track of that. And yes, as an individual, I think you can definitely, if you plan for it, yeah, you can probably hit that deduction. You can probably go over that deduction because mm-hmm. uh, most people and we end up figuring out how and why yes well through bank statements we'll look at a lot of things and yeah you can find you can find it sometimes and deductions reduce your taxable income Correct. right so a deduction what that does is it says okay i made thirty thousand i made fifty thousand dollars this year but the amount of deductions that you're able to create will change the ability for you to be taxed on all or most of that money. And so what it says is, okay, you made $30,000 this year, but with your purchases, you're able to reduce your, say your taxable income then was gonna be 24,000 with the standard deduction. You might be able to say no, I have these other deductions that I plan for throughout the year. And so my taxable income is actually only 20,000 and that might drop you into another bracket that might, and then that might put you into a place where, okay, well, I was able to then because of tax planning, I was able to have less of my money go in, um, go into uh, tax um, withdrawals throughout the year, my federal income tax offset, right. And be able to keep more of the money that you make. Because that's what tax planning is about. Tax planning is about being able to keep more of what you make. 
Now, you know, a lot of this, the folks who are listening are not really in a, in a position where, you know, they're making 100000 or 60000 or $70,000 a year. And tax planning might sound like, well, that's not something that I really need to do. But one of the things that I really, really want, want to talk about is um, tax returns and what to do with them. Because I can remember... Um, Last year, I got my first tax return in a long time, and it was really exciting. And I'll tell you why, um, because like I mentioned earlier, I had actually gone to a tax professional. Um, I'm going to liberally call her a tax professional. Um, and I, I'm meticulous about keeping all of my, my stuff, my information. I have my, my file, I, I bring it, and she's like, She's going to help me because I have, you know, this employee stock purchase program. I have um, my my stock portfolio. I have different monies that I utilized throughout the year that was more than what I had normally done. And so I was kind of like, okay, well, I don't want to act to have to, to accidentally overpay, and I also don't want to make a mistake on my taxes to where I created a big a big issue for myself. And so I, I bring all this stuff. I ask her, are you familiar with employee stock purchase program? Because there is, there's two different, there's something called cost basis um, in employee stock purchase. And because what happens is you're purchasing a stock for less than the market value. And so what you're going to be taxed on if you sell any stock is the difference between what the purchase price was and what you actually sold it at. So it's not the full price. We don't even have to get into all that, but basically there's stuff that has to be known, right? And so I brought my, my taxes to her. She says that she, she goes through and she puts all the information in and she comes back and she's like, okay, you owe, I think it was like $4,500. And I was like, there's no way I've been meticulous this year. Like I was, I was very, very certain we were going to be very close to break even because that was my goal for the year. And I asked, I said, are you sure you calculated the cost basis properly for the stocks that, that I, I sold? Because I sold some stock to buy a property. And Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And I said, okay, well, send over the the tax file. I'll look it over and I'll sign off on it if that's the case. And I look it over, and she has me being double taxed on on this on this stock. And and so I, I reached out, reached out several times. I'm like, I I'm not a tax professional. I'm like, I see the problem here. If you can fix that. I'll pay you and then we'll go ahead and, and file, but, but I can't file this because it's not right. And I'm not going to pay for stuff that I, that I don't have to pay for. Radio silence. Oh my gosh. I literally could not get this person to respond. And now the challenge here, and I think the lesson is a lot of people would have said, oh darn, I didn't do it right. And pay this lady $300 and then pay the government $5,000, right? I went back and I'm going to say, I not, shall not be named, right? But I went back, I, I took my information and I did my own taxes um, through in, in a tax system. And I got back, I think like $2,100 or something. Related. This is awesome. Right. And if I had just accepted what this woman said, I would have been out money. And the government's not going to be like, oh, hey, we just recognize that you overpaid. We want to send you. They're not going to do that. Okay. There's no, there's just no <laughs> chance to get that money back, right? So that's where you want to make sure that it's right. And so I wanted to talk a little bit. So that was a, a tax return that was phenomenal that I, that I got and I hadn't gotten one in a long time. And so my, my question is, a lot of folks out there are getting tax returns. And there is a a tendency to um let's say ball out right um have some fun even you know a lot of people pay off bills and things like that but sometimes the reason that there's a lot of sales um in february and march it, tvs um cell phones you know cars all these things is because they know people are getting their tax return and and every business wants a piece of that mm -hmm. but there are a lot of things that you can do with a tax return that's actually going to create a better financial situation for you and your family and i'm not just talking about paying off debt because you know obviously we can pay off debt but i think there are there are some better things that we can do to leverage tax returns and so one of the things that comes to mind for me it well no i'll, I'll stop but what are some things that, that you ladies might think about 
would be a better you know thing to do with a tax return what can people do with their tax returns start planning to do with their tax returns that are going to be coming um here in the next few months so that they can really move forward right level up um kind of get themselves to get their money right um i mean investments like stocks first law could be one and then another thing i think of is like paying just like that extra mortgage payment for the year Mm -hmm. um to knock down i mean knock us down your mortgage by like seven years if you can pay an extra one each you know so that's that's smart yeah. and and that's potentially building quite a bit of equity for you so you know, when you do if and when you do go to sell your home you're actually you're you're actually putting yourself in a great position mm -hmm. um i love that paying an extra using that to pay an extra mortgage payment so that you if you do that once a year then the math states that on a 30 year mortgage, you're going to knock off seven years of that mortgage by paying one extra payment to principal mm -hmm. here. Love that. Um, I would say definitely contributing <clears throat> to an IRA, investing in stocks for sure. Um, one thing that I do at the end of every year is I like, contribute to my IRA mm -hmm. to get a refund because I will not get a refund unless I contribute to my IRA. So it always offsets mm -hmm. pretty much. Wait, so, so you're investing in yourself and with that, you're receiving. Right, because if I didn't make, say I do a thousand dollars investment in my IRA, then I do my taxes, I get a thousand dollars back. If I don't do the IRA contribution, I just about break even. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I'm spending a thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, that thousand dollars is going into something that I told you. Right. Yeah, it's different. And then I get another thousand dollars came back, even though yes, I spent the thousand dollars. It's different from ending up owing two hundred dollars. In my mind, you're getting paid to invest in yourself. Right. And it might it might not sound like I'm getting anything, but no, I'm getting anything because that's going into my IRA. Your IRA is then going to be um, you know, growing through the, right. your interest that and and, uh, and as the stocks and, and the portfolio grow. And then you have another thousand dollars coming to you because you were smart and invested. Exactly. What's like the difference between your 401k and an IRA? Um, and I feel like I know that a little bit, but I think sometimes other people can have that same question. I'm not the best person to ask for that because I just got my very first 401k. Oh, nice. Yeah. I know like the company that I go through for my for my 401k at work offers an IRA as well. Mm -hmm. So um, a 401k is a, an employee, an employer sponsored retirement account. So a 401k is a retirement account that you're able to participate in because your employer um, created that, that relationship and that opportunity. An IRA is an individual retirement account. So an IRA is a retirement account that you initiate and you're able to, um, to contribute to. There are different um, amounts that you're able to uh, to max out tax-free in each of the different accounts. And then with a 401k, one of the biggest benefits always is free money, right? Because your employer, a lot of times, one of the benefits that they that they have for, um, for having people work for them is, okay, you work for us, you participate in the 401k, we're going to match the first 6% of, um, of, of uh, your deferral from your income the first six percent, we're going to match it dollar for dollar, or we're going to match fifty cents on every dollar. Right, and then after that, um, you you don't necessarily get matched, but you're still able to contribute. With an IRA, there's no one matching it, um, but it depending on whether it's a a Roth or um, or a regular IRA is going to depend on how much you're able to contribute to it, and uh, it's going to uh, it's going to determine um, how much is going to be uh, tax deferred or uh, or tax exempt. And it's just another another way of putting your money into something that's most likely going into the stock market and being utilized and you're gaining interest off, of, interest off of it. Yep. But you're still, there are still um, restrictions on when you're going to be able to, to pull uh, money from those accounts, okay. age restrictions typically. And um, if you do pull from those accounts prior to, uh, to those dates, then you're going to incur fees. And um, so you want to be you want to be again strategic with how much you're sending over there because it, it needs to be a position where you're still going to be able to be comfortable in life, but you're going to be setting yourself your up in your future up uh, down the road by contributing to these uh, to these accounts. And so for like the average everyday person, I think it's important to kind of like 
talk about why a 401k and an IRA is maybe better than a regular savings account. And I think there's like multiple levels on that and, and why sitting down and budgeting and looking, you know, tie in all the things that we talk about all the time. Um, you know, finding that little bit of money, $25 a paycheck, $100 a month, whatever it is, finding something like your works 401k if they offer it or an IRA Mm -hmm. that that's automatically going into it's gaining interest. Mm-hmm. And the math is probably better with numbers on like the pitiful amount that a normal bank offers you in interest on a savings account where your money is sitting there. And if it's in the same account, if it's a savings account in the same place as your normal bank account, it's very also easy to transfer back and forth into your yeah, every day. Money. It's like, it oh, there. <laughs> whereas an IRA, um, it's, it's somewhere else. You can't touch it. Like Amanda said, there's restrictions. And you're saving money, it's gaining interest by doing nothing at all but sitting there. Mm-hmm. And in the future, you're setting yourself up. Well, and, and there's also the beauty of compound interest. Um, so, a couple of things to think about. If, you know, Alexis, if I was to, to tell you, okay, well, if you put $1,000 um, aside, every time you put $1,000 aside, I'm going to give you a dollar. Um, versus Sarah, if I told you, if you put a thousand dollars aside, every time you put a thousand dollars aside, I'm going to give you $80. Which account do you want to, which account do you want to put your thousand dollars in? Right. And so that's, that's the difference between just a regular old savings account in a regular old bank and, um, and your average investment account, um, 8% compound interest. And now, and now you're looking at, and, and I'm 8%, I'm, I'm being um, conservative, you know, eight to 12% is typically the, the numbers that you're, you'll hear. Um, but what's going to happen is now, now you have a thousand eighty dollars in there, right? And then you have, um, and then you have, you're going to have 8% of that. And then as that, as that grows, you're now having what's that's what compounded interest is because it's interest on top of interest. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have a, an emergency account. You've got to, you've got to have an emergency account. If, if your tire blows out, if the radiator blows, if your air conditioner goes out, if someone gets sick, you know, whatever's going to happen. If you lose your job, unfortunately, or, or if your, your business is slow for a while, you're going to need to have some, some funds to fall back on, you know, six to 12 months minimum of, of funds to fall back on. After that investment, mm-hmm. after that, you should have your money growing in an investment account for you. So that's, that's, you know, my advice. Um, there are some other things that you can use that tax return for though, that are going to allow you to, to better your, your life. Um, so one of the things that I, that I think it can be underappreciated is investing in a course, like in an, in a, in a, an educational opportunity that will help you to earn money. Right. So it's easy for someone to, to say, Hey, go out and invest, but investing is something that you need to learn. And if you don't have a mentor that's helping you, and if you're not the type of person that can just go, you know, on uh, Google and go to Schwab's website and, you know, read and listen and, and do all these things, um, you, you may need a, a mentor, someone who's going to help you. So you might be investing, you might invest in an investment course, now you've taken that tax return that, yeah, you could have gotten a sick new TV. Yeah, you could have gotten the best new phone, whatever it might be. But now you've taken the tax return and you put yourself in a position that that money is now going to help you to make money forever, right? Um, you could invest in a real estate course. You can invest in a course that's going to help you to, to learn how to monetize your money and, um, and, and earn property and um, buy property. And that property is then going to be a cash flow asset for you. Um, you can invest in a certificate that you can turn into a business, right? There are a lot of people out there who don't want to do things that might come easy to you. You can go to like Coursera or something like that, invest in a project management course, which I think Google is doing project management um, courses for like $300 or something wildly um, low. Uh, you know, if you look up um, the Google certificate program, you'll be able to find that. But project management is something that you can make a lot of money freelancing in. And you can take that course, you can invest in that course, and now you can start to build yourself a business around project management, right? Um, I, there, you might be really great at um, at Google Docs or um, or Excel or Google Sheets or things like that. 
you might be really good at it and you might think, oh, that's not something that I can monetize. Uh, I'm sorry. I reach out to people on Fiverr all the time when I don't have time or don't feel like creating um, a sheet that I need to to analyze numbers and information um, or be able to be interactive for people to be able to use and uh, and create a visual representation of, uh, of their finances or something like that. I reach out to people on Fiverr all the time to do that. Editing videos. There are people who are editing videos and they know how to do it. They're on their phones all the time doing it. And they're, they're really good at it. They don't realize it's like you can charge people 50, 60, 70, 100, 150, $300 a video to do that. And there are people all the day out there taking a course, learning to do something that other people just don't want to do and then monetizing it. And so right. as tax season starts to come up, it's like, think about that, guys. Think about what is it that I can do to invest in myself that's going to allow me to then monetize my mind. Okay, monetize your mind. Everyone's trying to get rich quick. Everyone's trying to, you know, crypto, NFTs, all of that. And I'm, I'm about that stuff, honestly. Like, you know, there are, there are a lot of ways to... Um, to earn money and to make your money work for you but monetize your mind guys like you have something right up here that's going to allow you to, to make more money and tax season might be the time that you're uh, you're able to to do that it might be the only time throughout the year that you have excess funds coming in that, that aren't dedicated to paying a bill or um, or doing something like that right that's not going to gas or whatever and that could be something that you can do and i'm getting real passionate about it because i'm just sitting here and i'm like man you know there are so many things that people can do the um um, the gig economy and um, and consulting and, and freelance economy is real, and you could get a part of that. And then there's a stream of income for you where you get off of work, you're trading your time for money. Okay, you get off of work, and now you can maybe spend another hour and a half or two hours doing something for someone on Fiverr, and they're paying you, and you didn't have to ask nobody um, for for permission to do it or anything like that. So taking a course, investing in a course to help you earn money. I'm gonna step back because I, I I got on my uh, my soapbox there because that's something that's no, super it, yeah. super interesting yourself yeah and there's so many websites now yeah are that upwork and jackrabbit and mm -hmm. fiverr there's you can go anywhere really yeah. I, you feel like i need help hanging my tv you can go to one of those so like you can go to almost anything for yeah. people out there who, who love clothes who love fashion guess what I have any, we have an event that's coming up and I'm, I'm reaching out to, to different stylists um, to, to help participate in the event. And I'm looking at people who love to shop, who love clothes and accessories. And they are literally on Thumbtack and Google and um, different websites charging people to get styled, charging people. I have an event to go to, I'm going to a, uh, a formal event and they're charging people to to say, okay, well, I'll go shopping for you. You give me the money, and I'll get you. You know, I'll take your measurements. I'll get you something cute. I'll, I'll style you up, and then you'll go to your thing. And that's something that they love to do, right? And it, it that actually just brought to my mind. Um, you know, Kardashians love them or hate them, whatever, right? But Kim Kardashian, like, how did she get started? She was organizing famous people's closets, like. A lot of people say the Kardashians are famous for being famous. I think they're famous for being a family that is smart and monetizes every skill that they have. And, you know, her mom's a beast and um, monetizes every skill that they have. And so there's a lot, um, there's a lot that can, can be done there. Um, you can invest in financial coaching. Maybe you're just terrible with money and you're like a lot of people a lot of people they can't hold on to it they can't do anything it, they can't it goes it. as soon that's as why it goes in. Is important because mm -hmm. once that money goes in you don't touch it right. like you don't see it you can't see it anywhere unless you log on to the web it's a whole task yeah you know? but when people have just money in their savings account yeah it's right there you see it it's gone it's right there mm -hmm. they're like maybe i will just take it. no transfer yeah. get it somewhere where you can't see it right 100 yeah yeah with that it, it's what did um when I was young when I was little my mom used to say money just burns a hole in your pocket doesn't it and my granddad used to tell me that too and I didn't get it I didn't understand what they meant but I would work I always like to, to do work and find little odd jobs and I would work and I'd find money and then as soon as they got I got paid I'm like can you take me to what 
Yeah, <laughs> best buy. Penny. I always wanted a new gadget, right? And it, man, that money's just burning a hole in your pocket, isn't it? And there are adults today where money just burns a hole in your pocket. And the moment you get it, it's gone. And you may be a candidate that needs financial coaching, right? Forward Motion can help you with that. I can help you with um, putting together a plan for yourself and actually helping you to get really good with money. We do it for a fraction, 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 fraction of the cost that an actual, um, that a, a, a freelance or a regular financial coach costs because we are a nonprofit. So that, if that's something that, that you need, maybe tax season is when you're going to be able to afford that. And it's time for you to really kick in and invest in yourself and invest in your mind. Something else that you can do is um, you can start looking into buying a property. Um, that's our biggest tax plan, tax plan mm -hmm. for people. Property, mm -hmm. invest in properties, especially now. It's an appreciating asset. It's, yeah, it's, What's an appreciating asset? Someone someone shared. What, what is an appreciating asset? It's one that tells you you're pretty. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't appreciate. It's, it goes up in value. It goes up in value. It goes up in value. And that's, I mean, you see all the assets. Most of them, depreciation expense, depreciation expense, depreciation expense. Yeah. Yeah, a computer is a depreciating asset. Mm -hmm. A car is a de depreciating asset. These headphones, if you use them for business, they're a depreciating asset because every day that you own them, they are they are worth less money. The cell phone is a depreciating asset, right? But property appreciates over time. So, you know, this may be something that I touched on on the show before, but if you're if you're a young person, right, and I can't believe I'm at the age where I'm saying you're not. If you're a young person, you're I know. You're Young people, like, I'm not going to take away my young card yet. I'm sorry. If you want to go there, be my guest. But I am young, 34 and young and proud. Okay. You're not young. I was part of a, um, as part of, so I'm part of an organization, right? And I was um, in, I was going to come to an event and it was like, okay, well, this is the event for, you know, the young people. And then you have the, um, the adults event and then you have the older adults event. And I was like, I'm going to the young event like what and i and it had the age range and it said 18 to 26 and i was like i am so far out of young people and it's not uh, when you're feeling when you're filling things out the next time you're going to notice when you're filling things out you're going to it's going to be like what's your age range it's going to be like 18 to 24 26 to 32 and it's going to be like 33 to 40 and stick your stinker with the 40 year old world um i still click those boxes like i'm 22 and now you're like i'm 28 now but I still think I'm 22. It's no matter what. I can't believe you're 28. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> I'm young. You are. And as am I. As am I. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. No. Um, so if you know, there's like 70 more years of my life. Maybe 60. You're living to your 105? My grandma's 97. Wow. 98. Modern, you're just really counting on the miracles of modern <laughs> medicine. I mean, I've got some good genes. All right. My grandpa's 90 almost. That's awesome. I'm holding strong. I don't know about you guys. I've got 70 years of life left. I'm I'm with it. I love it. Right. Maybe 60. 50 minimum. I'm not trying to get you to die. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pushing you out of this world. That's a long, a lot of years left. I have more years left than I have lived, so I feel like that makes me young. That makes you young. Okay. All right. Okay. We're not old till we're 50, guys. That's right. Don't tell my mom I said that. Or grandma, yeah. Yeah. Goodness. All right. Well, um, you can also you, you can you can use that money to um, to look into to purchasing a home, right? Um, there are a lot of different programs out there, and one of the things that I I really want to point out is house hacking. I'm going to continue to touch on this um, episode after episode, especially for, for you young folks um, who are looking at potentially purchasing a home. What if your first property is not a single family home or a condo, but your first property is a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex? What if you purchase a, a fourplex that has three tenants that are already living there and you're able to use the rent that those tenants are already paying as part of your income in order to qualify for the property use your um, your tax return um, in order to uh, in order to qualify or, or get into the property and now 
you are purchasing a home or you have people who are paying for the property because they're renting from you, now all of the money that you would be spending on your rent or mortgage, you're able to take that and invest, build a business, invest in yourself, right? That's house hacking. Even if it's a duplex, right? You have one other person who's who's paying potentially all of, of the mortgage or more of the mortgage and they're paying that to you now. And now you're not having to pay the, the expenses to, uh, to live in that home. So one of the things that parents can, be, can do, um, if you have great credit, make sure that you're making your kids um, authorized users on your credit cards. If you have great credit, Make sure that you're using, um, giving them authorized user on your credit card. Don't give them a credit card unless you're, unless you're bold like that. My, you know, my son does not have one of my credit cards, but he is an authorized user. And um, so he's taking advantage of my good credit history. And when he um, turns 18, he's going to be able to have a great credit and I'm not going to have to co-sign on stuff for him. I've already given him that leg up, right? Um, house hacking, house hacking. So those are you know a lot of the different things that we can do with taxes and i know we're getting uh, we're getting close on time here um i'm i hope that you all have had fun i've had a lot of fun i got to to get passionate about uh, another financial subject that um is a lot of fun for me um so one of the things i want to uh to point out is um some upcoming events that we have so i'm going to share with you all um you're going to hear it here first um you'll, you'll probably see it on social media before this airs but um, we have a, uh, a conference that's coming up in April. So on April 30th, we have the Move, the Move Forward Conference. It's a full day financial um, and career development conference that is being um, hosted by Forward Motion. And um, we'll have more information in, uh, in, in below. Uh, you'll, we'll have all the information there to be able to sign up, um, check it out. But it's a full day conference where you'll be able to come in and get your money right. You'll be able to understand how to move your career forward and how to level up your career. You will not leave how you came. Um, really excited about this conference that's coming up. So make sure that you reserve your seat as soon as the, the reservation links come out. Um, we also have a Get Your Money Right course that is being developed. And that is um, super exciting. So if you're not able to to make it to the workshops, if you're not able to, uh, to get the individualized coaching, then you'll be able to take advantage of the Get Your Money Right course and uh, and do that at your own pace. Um, and then there are uh, different ways to rock with us, right? So like, share, subscribe. Okay, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Forward Motion AZ. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube. Moving forward, one family at a time is our YouTube page. And then we also have our bonfire store, which I'm going to share the, the bonfire link. So if you want to rock, um, I, I'm wearing an old shirt uh, today, but I'll flash up the, uh, the bonfire store. If you want to rock uh, forward motion gear and, and also help us, then you can um, buy t-shirts, uh, hoodies, uh, long sleeve shirts. Um, what else do we have? We have coffee mugs and tank tops. Um, yeah, visors. We don't have visors. Oh, so we don't have visors. Um, so you can get those at our bonfire style. <laughs> so let's go back to that fashion question. Right, visors not in. Um, so you can get all of that on our bonfire store, and all of those proceeds do go to help folks who are um, otherwise not able to uh, to pay the small fees for our um, programs um, to to be able to get scholarships there. And then you can donate at forwardmotionaz.org forward slash donate. Right. Alexis, thank you so much for being here with us. I mean, I wish I knew more about personal business. I'm getting to see me. But yes, great <laughs> information. No, absolutely, absolutely. And it was great to have you on. Um, and Sarah, as always. Yeah. Been fun. Always gonna be here. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, you all have a wonderful, uh, wonderful week. And we'll talk to you soon.